Hello and welcome back to Saw 2, I mean Saw 3, I mean 999. Yeah, back at this murder attempt, I guess. Let's get right back into it. So, out comes the knife from his pocket. A pocket knife. He held it to Clover's pale, quivering neck. If you get any closer, I'll... I'll cut her open! Santa skidded to a halt. He snarled at the scrawny man with the knife and gritted his teeth. Y yes that's right. The man's smile was neither friendly nor reassuring. Sweat poured down his neck, soaking the collar of his shirt. Clover, are you alright? The prince, er, Snake's voice, sounded oddly concerned. Yeah. I'm fine. Her voice shook, making her words sound less convincing. <clears throat> cough, cough. What the hell are you trying to do? I told you. This is my plan. What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I I'm not gonna do anything to her. Well, then why are you holding a knife to her, sir? If she just does what I tell her to, well, I'll let her go. <clears throat> Man. I need to think of a better voice for this guy. He started to move backwards, slowly keeping his grip on Clover. Keeping their distance, Junpei and the others followed. Eventually, the man reached the wall. He gave a start as his back touched it, then glanced around quickly and spoke. Uh, verify. Huh? The left. Look on your left. D do you see the device on the wall? P place your hand on the scanner panel. The round part. This guy knows far too much about what he needs to do. He's in on it, isn't he? He's probably like Zero's brother or something. And what if I don't? The man's nostrils flared and he looked like he was about to choke. Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could, I could slit your throat open right now. I'll kill you if I have to. All I need is your bracelet. Just do it! Do it now! He pressed the knife against Clover's neck, hard. Slowly, she stretched her left hand out toward the device. Her back was to it, and she had to feel around for a moment before she found the circular panel. It made a cold electronic noise, and on the display above her hand, an asterisk appeared. Yeah, so that's how it works, Junpei thought to himself. By placing one's palm on what the ninth man had called the scatter panel, the user's bracelet number would be entered into the device. <clears throat> Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Junpei shifted his eyes to the door itself. The number on the door was five. The ninth man seemed to know a little more about the device's operation than he should, as I said. How had he known exactly what to do? Good, good, you're done. Next! His bloodshot eyes crept from person to person until finally they stopped on the lion, Ace. You, right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes, I am, so... Uh, then you're next. Just verify your number like this little brat did. What are you doing? D do it! Don't- don't you care what happens to her? Uh, okay, just c calm down. Ace held his hands up, palms out. The ninth man jerked his chin toward the device. Slowly, cautiously, Ace moved toward the device. After what seemed like an agonizing eternity, he reached it. Now, verify. Ace nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. The device beeped again, and a second asterisk appeared. Now the device had Clover and Ace's numbers. Four and one. Four plus one does equal five. The same as the number written on the door, but it wouldn't open just yet. Only three to five people can pass through the number door. Oh right. I should do that in my other voice for zero. Not that my voices have much variation. 
You see, in my head I sound a lot different, but I probably sound exactly the same. Oh well. The door needed at least one more person. Who would that be? Get back! His voice shook, but the knife he held to Clover's throat made his words a command. What is it? It's at five now, so, uh... What does is, what is nine get? Is he nine? Five plus nine equals, uh, fourteen. Four... Okay, so it's just, it's just him. <clears throat> Ace took two, then three steps back. No! Farther! More than that! Go all the way back! Slowly, Ace did what he was told. The ninth man's lips curled into a cruel, twisted smile. That was when Junpei understood his plan. Clover's four and Ace's one added to the ninth man's nine would equal four plus one plus nine equals fourteen into one plus four equals five. In other words, those three are going in together. <laughs> Thank God, you are all so cooperative. Now I can get out of this nightmare. He pressed his own hand against the scanner panel. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. He dropped his hand to the lever on the side of the device and pulled. You know, there's probably more uh, combinations of numbers. I mean, you could go up to five. I mean, you could bring more people. Jeez. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see what happens. The door opened with a heavy, metallic groan. He let go of Clover. Wait! Junpei leapt toward the ninth man, but he wasn't fast enough. The man shoved Clover. Ah! And hopped through the door. Huh. Okay, have a good one, guys. I'm going off ahead now. Well then, goodbye. He raised his hand and waved a twisted smirk on his face. Then he was gone. Very Resident Evil-like door opening and closing. When he was gone, the door ground shut with a dull clang of metal on metal. Clover! Are you alright? Snake ran to Clover's sign as she lay on the floor. Yeah, I'm fine. She climbed unsteadily to her feet, and once there, leaned heavily on Snake's shoulder for support, because I guess that shove crippled her. Nah, whatever. Junpei ran to the door. The others followed him. Shit ain't gonna open. Then again, there's... Okay, so we're gonna follow after him by finding more combinations that'll make five, won't we? Okay, right. Several pairs of hands grabbed hold of the handles and pulled. They grunted and strained, but their efforts were futile, probably. Because they too were bad at math, like me. Ah, shit. It won't budge. That was when Lotus, the dancer, spoke. Her voice was quiet. Do you hear something? Like what? Like some sort of beeping. She is clearly hearing the sound of her own beeping. You know, the beeping noise that goes off whenever people talk, especially her. It's very beepy. Junpei pressed his ear against the cold metal of the door. The others did the same. That man is clearly being murdered in there by a robot that beeps. You're right. I can hear it, too. Now, what is it? Then they heard something else. It was the ninth man. Ah, oh, shit. Why isn't it stopping? God damn it. You, you lied. Lied. This, this wasn't supposed to happen. This is wrong. This is wrong. His voice shook with fear. Safe on the outside, they stepped back from the door and looked at one another. What is happening in there? Open the door! Please! I'm begging you! Help me! Please get me out of here! Get me out of here! Junpei grabbed hold of the device. He slammed his hand on the scanner panel. Nothing happened. I assume that's it. Yep, nope, no asterisk. Why didn't it register him? He looked at the display where the asterisks had shown up. It said, Engaged. Ah, ah, oh my god! There's no time left! Listen! I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! It was him! He killed me! It was him! Ah! 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 Okay, whatever. What's this? Oh. Did the fucking ceiling just collapse on him? 
Dots. Dots. The explosion rocked the room. Oh, that was an explosion. Instinctively, they ducked, then stood up slowly, and then they realized there was no danger. No one spoke. Silence filled the room. In that silence, the electronic tone of the echoed... Uh, the electronic tone that echoed across the room sounded as loud as a gunshot. All eyes turned toward it. Vacant, read the device. Heh. <laughs> It had come from the device mounted next to the door. The display changed from engaged to vacant. I wonder if there was any way I could stop that man from what was probably a horrible death. Oops. Oh well. We'll see, we'll see. Well, let's see if we can open it. Seven, the mountain swallowed hard. Junpei nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. Five, a red asterisk appeared on the LCD panel. The device had registered Junpei's bracelet number, five. It was not enough, however. At least two more people were needed. Junpei asked, which pair? Oh my god. Okay, who do I want to bring with me? Oh, this is the first choice I have to make in the game. Let's think clearly now. Okay, is it safe to assume these all add up to things that make five? Yes. Ace and Lotus. Okay, that's nine plus five equals fourteen. So these all, okay, yes, yes, these all equal whatever. So we want to bring Ace and Lotus. Eh, uh, eh, maybe. Snake and Seven, Blind Man and a Mountain. Eh, uh, nah. Santa and June. Now, this probably is going to be a terrible option to pick, but I just like Santa too much. Going with that one. Santa and, uh, June. I think you could give me a hand here. The pun was a little too on the nose, but the mood was still grim. Both Santa and June lifted their hands silently. He verified, and she followed suit. 5 plus 3 plus 6 equals 14, and the 1 plus 4 equals 5, they'd vo la 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 fulfilled the conditions. If they were to put pull the lever on the side. Are you guys ready? I'm gonna open it. Junpei grabbed the lever and looked back over his shoulder. They stiffened and nodded. Junpei nodded back and set his mouth in a grim line. Then he slowly lowered the lever. There was a metallic groan, and the door slid open. A breath of air drifted out of it, carrying a stench that nearly made them gag. Man, that guy must have died horribly. Junpei grimaced and put a hand over his mouth. Oh my god! Good god. Lotus and Ace shuddered. Seven grunted. Ugh, that's pretty bad. Even Santa's voice shook. He blew up! It appeared that Santa was right. The hallway on the other side of the door was splattered with chunks of torn flesh and dark red blood. Oh, good lord girlish screams. The shriek echoed across the room. It had come from June. Then her strength left her and she dropped. As Shunpei turned to catch her, the door groaned shut. Did anyone even enter the room? She crumpled to the floor. June, you okay? Junpei dropped to his knees and put his arm around her shoulders. That was when he noticed her whole body was feverish. She was radiating intense heat. Maybe I made a mistake. Then again, I, they, they all saw what was in there. I don't think there was any preventing this. What the hell? Where'd this fever come from? Dots. June didn't answer. Her face looked like wax, and her whole body began to shake. Alright, let's just rest for a minute, okay? You think you can walk? She nodded weakly. Junpei lifted June to her feet and guided her to a nearby chair. Here we go. As gently as he could, he set her down in it. That's a sad sight. How are you feeling? Are you alright? She nodded, and as she did, a single huge tear rolled down the side of her face. Why? Why did this happen? Eh, probably because there was some choice that I could have made only on New Game Plus or something. That's, that's how games work these days. Her voice cracked, broken by misery and grief, and choked by sobs. Why did this happen? Junpei spun around. 
Do any of you know what the fuck is going on here? Where's Zero? Who is Zero? What's the Nonary game? Come on, anybody? Anything? What the hell is going on? What are we doing here? No one spoke. Ace, Snake, Santa, Clover, Seven, and Lotus. They simply stood there, seven pairs of downcast eyes and seven grim lines for mouths. June pay yeah, June's body shook with silent sobs. They slowed as the minutes ticked by, and eventually they stopped. <clears throat> ding, ding, dong. Then suddenly, in the cold, heavy silence that had enveloped them like a thick fog, a bell began to ring. The clock in the central hall. Seven, eight, nine, ten times. One, perhaps two more times than I was expecting. And then on the tenth ring, it stopped, and the sound of the bell faded away into silence. Oh, that just means it's ten. I forgot that's how clocks work. Anyway. Oh, it's ten o'clock, then. Ace said what each of them had been thinking. <sighs> that means it's been an hour since Zero's little announcement. Eight hours left. Seven's deep voice echoed across the room. Eh. Fuck! I've had enough of this crap! Santa leapt to his feet, his fist clenched. How are we gonna pussyfoot around like this? We've got eight hours until this time limit Zero was going on about is up. Let's get going already! Go! Go! Santa's outburst fell on deaf ears. No one seemed to agree with him. Uh, to be fair, I kinda agree with him. We should get the fuck out of here. They stared back at him, their eyes blank and their faces tired. Finally, Lotus spoke. No, I refuse. I'm not gonna end up like him. Him? You mean the ninth man? Of course. Who else? I wonder if that guy is actually dead, or if that was somehow all a ploy. Now nah, I'll just assume he's dead for now. I'll keep that in the back of my mind, though. Forgot to read what that said. Uh, oh, just recalling the murder scene. The dark reddish black pool of blood. The scattered pieces of flesh. <clears throat> Organs strewn across the floor like the blossoming of a grotesque flower. Okay, hold the fuck up. How did this guy manage to blow up in such a way? Was there a bomb inside of him? I mean, may maybe the maybe the wristwatch blew up, but I don't think that's enough to make his entire body and organs, like, get all strewn across like that. Ugh. We'll see. The explosion that had torn through his body had been powerful. The ninth man's neck had been twisted at an on angle. Okay, yeah, so they saw the dead body, so he's probably dead super hard. Junpei suspected the detonation had thrown him against the wall. Half of his face was crushed, and the other half was covered in blood. Uh, I guess enough force can just explode a person, then. Oh well. Most of his abdomen had been emptied, either by the explosion or by gravity. He had landed on his back, and stark white ribs jutted up from his chest like the legs of some sort of macabre crab. Ooh, did the explosion come from inside of him? Eh, not that it really matters. Junpei felt something flip in his stomach. I think he just screwed up. Eyebrows went up, and Santa continued. He probably set off some sort of trap that killed him. I'm not gonna screw up like that. I'm getting out of here alive. <laughs> the prince laughed. Whatever Snake was laughing at, Santa did not find particularly humorous. What's so goddamn funny? Oh, my apologies. You were just so very confident. I couldn't help myself. What the fuck? I think you've mistaken the situation. Huh? The ninth man's death? It had nothing to do with a trap. Or at least, not the sort of trap you imagine it did. Then? He broke one of Zero's rules. That was why he died. Quite simple if you think about it. Eh? You still don't? Alright. How about you take a moment and think back to what Zero said? Specifically, what did he say about the number of people? He said, only three to five people can pass through the numbered door. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And again... Well, yeah, that's clearly what went wrong here, but damn, I am just so curious about how Zero managed to kill that guy. 
right? And after that, you've forgotten the relevant part. What did Zero say? Eh? Santa furrowed his brow in thought. <clears throat> Junpei thought back. Zero said, Oh, God. That only two people can go through, that everyone who verified had to go, more than six pe- Uh-oh. Um. Um. Uh-oh. Alright, that only two people can go through. No, I doubt it. More than six people can go through. No. It, it's gotta be this one. Right? Right? That everyone who verified had to go? I hope that was it. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute, right? Yeah, that does sound familiar. I think it was something like that. Whatever it was, it means that groups of less than three or more than five can't go. That is correct. A gold star for you, Junpei. Snake inclined his head toward Junpei. The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a numbered door by himself. That was why he was executed. By something. Then Zero's watching us from somewhere, making sure we don't break any rules. Oh, I'm not so sure of that. Why not? Because this execution system is entirely automatic, you didn't notice? There's no need for him to monitor us. What do you mean? <coughs> cough, cough, cough. Snake looked at Seven with what could only be described as pity and sighed. Kinda like Snake, kinda don't. Oh well. Oh, very well. I see it must be me who tells you. I've waited long enough, I suppose. I had hoped Zero might spare me the trouble, but that seems increasingly unlikely. He couldn't see them, of course, but perhaps Snake sensed the confused eyes upon him. When Ace spoke, he gave words to everyone else's thoughts. Do you know something? Well, I know a great many things, but... yes. What is it you know? Here. Snake removed a card from the pocket of his jacket. With a flourish, he presented it to Ace, who took a close look at it and spoke. Come on now, what's the point of giving me this? Give me that! Santa snatched the card from Ace, but his expression of disgust quickly turned to one of confusion. Eh? That was this! Seven tucked it out of Santa's hands. Huh, <laughs> I see. The card went from Seven to Lotus, from Lotus to June, and finally to Junpei. He looked at it and understood. Holy shit, that is a fucking essay. Oh, never mind, it's just Braille. Braille, the written language of the blind. The card was covered with small and buzzed blum blah, 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 bumps. Junpei could recognize it, but he certainly couldn't read it. Like any proper seeing person. Sorry, guys, I can't read this. Oh, Junpei. Junpei handed the card back to Snake, who nodded at him with a small smirk. Okay, that was fun. What's so important about that card? I found it in my pocket. I can only assume it is a message from Zero. F from Zero? A message? What does it say? Suddenly, everyone was crowding around Snake, desperate to hear what the message said. Santa looked especially... Ah. Oof, oof. I'm gonna, gonna burp, and it's passed, it passed, it's fine. Ah. Talking so much makes me thirsty. Ah well. Santa especially looked as if he were about to grab hold of Snake and shake the answers from him. Snake raised his hand. Calm down now, no need to panic. You don't need to force me, I'll read it. <coughs> Junpei swallowed hard and waited for him to start. He was not the only one. Ah, take a swig of water. Presently, Snake began to read, his voice calm. His fingers glided over the tiny bumps as he spoke. Bracelet number two. Since you are not blessed with sight, I shall bless you, and only you, with information. I shall tell you of the function of the red and the dead, and of the bracelet. Red. Dead. Bracelet. I smell a sequel to Red Dead Redemption. The red is the recognition device. It will verify your number. Beside every numbered door, you will find a red. The dead is the deactivation device. It does exactly what it says. 
Once you have passed through the number door, you must use the dead to stop the detonator in your bracelet. Okay, so the bracelet is what goes boom then. But perhaps you are wondering, what does this detonator detonate? I am afraid this may be something of a surprise. I have placed a small bomb inside of you, and the people who you are about to meet. Oh, good lord. You swallowed it while you were unconscious. I have no doubt that by this time... By the time you read this note, the bomb will have passed your stomach and found its way into your small intestine. In other words, you will be unable to regurgitate it. I mean, you could just poop it out, but hey, by the time that comes around, the ship will have almost sunk. Or already sunk, really. And the digestive system is hard. I suggest you do not try it. <coughs> As I mentioned before, the bracelet on your left head hand contains a detonator. Think of it as a remote fuse or timer for the bomb in your body. There is only one condition will cause it to detonate. That condition is that you enter a numbered door. Once you have done so, the timer will activate no matter who you may be. You will have 81 seconds. 8 plus 1 equals 9? Yeah, sure. If, after that time, the detonator has not been activated, it will send a signal to the bomb in your body, instructing it to explode. In order to deactivate the detonator, every person who verified their number at the red must also verify their numbers at the dead. Once all numbers have been verified by the dead, you need only pull the lever at this side, and the countdown will cease. So I'm gonna guess that the happy fun stinger here is that... Yeah, every time you enter a room with the people, you guys are gonna need to find the dead in 81 seconds, wherever it may be. It's probably hidden in each different room, but hey, what do I know? Anyone who does not verify their number at the red will find themselves unable to verify their number at the dead. That is to say, if you should pass through a numbered door without first verifying your number at the red, in 81 seconds, you will be dead. Ah, Zero is a rhymey motherfucker. You must also keep in mind that the numbered doors will close automatically after 9 seconds have passed, as opposed to 8 seconds or 10 seconds. So long as the door is open, the dead will not function. You will, yeah, you would do well to remember this. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets. I should be taking notes. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or detects that the wearer's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. Alright, first question. Is there a way to fall, uh, make your heart rate reach zero without actually dying? I mean, I've heard of people being able to still their heartbeats. It's probably not healthy, but hey, whatever. Mm, whatever. There is no other way to remove your bracelet. If you attempt to force it off or disable the detonator, the bomb within you will immediately explode, so yeah, I probably wouldn't try to still the heartbeat. This is all the information which I can impart to you. How you choose to use it is for you to decide. If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. I wish you the best of luck. But... Hmm, should Snake have really told that to us then? Eh, I mean, that's just information he could have used for himself. I mean, he trusts just about everyone else here, it seems. Hmm, hmm, okay. Snake finished reading and carefully returned the card to his pocket. The message had been lengthy, but its meaning was clear. <coughs> ah, I, oh dear, I am sick. Only those who verified their numbers at the red could pass through the numbered doors. Teams could not increase or decrease their numbers. The reds, deads, and bracelets enforced the rules. They were judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah, sure, that's a good enough analogy. In defiance of zero suggestions, both Santa and Seven put fingers down their throats and began to gag. You poor, poor bastards. The rest stiffened. Some touched their stomachs, while some simply stared at their bracelets. Junpei gingerly touched his stomach. There was a bomb inside his body. Neat. The thought of it made him queasy. His stomach felt oddly hollow, and his legs were weak. Why had Zero designed such a ludicrous game? <laughs> because he likes fun. Why else? Junpei looked over at the others. 
Alright, I'm gonna ask one more time. Do any of you know anything else about Zero? They were all silent, each person waiting to hear what the others would say. Finally, Santa spoke. Actually, I... I saw him. I saw Zero when I got grabbed. I didn't see his face, though. Son of a bitch was wearing some kind of gas mask. Yeah, same here, man. <sighs> what the hell? Come on, guys, give me something. You know, like, surprise or something. Instead, it was Santa who looked surprised. There was a moment of silence, and then everyone spoke at once. Yeah, I saw him too. Me too. He was wearing a gas mask. As stories were sorted out, the truth became clear. All of their stories were the same. They had been abducted at home. Abducted at home at midnight. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second here. So logically... Let's think about this for a second here. They had all been taken at midnight here. Which means that there's either nine zeros... Or... They have somehow all been unconscious for, like, nine days or something. I mean, like, let's say Ace was taken first. He would have been had to be unconscious for, like, nine days before all the other people had gathered, assuming there's only one zero and he gets one abduction carried out at night. I mean, something, something, something's not right here. The person claiming to be Zero had worn a mask. There had been white smoke, and then each person had passed out. When they awoke, they had found themselves on D-Deck in a room with a three-level bunk bed. Only seven stories seemed to lack the detail of others. Oh. Me? Yeah, well, mine was just like the rest of yours, but, uh... That was all he said. It had occurred to Junpei at the time that it sounded so much strange, but he didn't press the issue. He hadn't done so, because there was something that struck him as even stranger. That was not the mystery of the relationship between Snake and Clover. That was the mystery. Now, yeah, whatever. For some reason, they had been abducted from the same room and woke it up in the same room. Okay, so make that eight zeros. Or eight nights. Now, yeah, whatever. Junpei looked at them thoughtfully. Okay, so what's the deal with the two of you anyway? It was Clover that answered. Clearly, she felt she had nothing to hide. We're siblings. Uh, okay. Siblings? Uh, yes. Snake is my older brother, obviously. That means I'm his little sister. Isn't that really so hard to understand? Ah. Uh, I, I won't even question it. Junpei was taken aback. The others seemed just as surprised. She is correct, of course. He laid his hand on Clover's shoulder. Are you surprised? Well, yeah, but... Why? There are other people here with connections to one another? Those two, for instance. Snake pointed at Junpei and June. Oh, you mean me and Junpei. Ah, yes. You did say you were childhood friends, didn't you? You went to school together? Yeah. June glanced at Junpei, uncomfortable with the sudden attention. Junpei felt somewhat nervous as well, and tried to scratch his head as casually as possible. Hey, you think maybe we could figure out who Zero is this way? Yeah, you're right. You connect the dots between the victims, and that leads you to the perp. Oh man, Seven sounds like a cop. Or a criminal. Eh, it could be either one. Textbook. Textbook... stuff. Junpei, June, does any of this ring a bell? Right. Ring a bell. Ring a bell? I've heard some bells. They looked at one another. And like it was staged, they both tilted their neck at the same time. Adorable. Well, perhaps she went to school with the son of a multi-millionaire. A millionaire? Son? Well, someone bought this boat and set up all of... This. Whoever Zero is, they must be incredibly rich. I... Huh. You know, I didn't really take that into consideration. Unless Zero somehow managed to, like, murder the entire crew of this ship. Come to think of it, who the fuck is running this ship? 
Doesn't doesn't a ship require quite the crew? I mean, I don't. I, I can can Zero. You know, can he run a whole ship by himself? I mean, I I imagine there's a bunch of buttons to press. Then again, the ship is already sinking, so hey, whatever, I guess. Well, we can't be sure of that. To me, this seems as though it's the work of an organization, not an individual. Therefore, nine to eight zeros, or eight to nine zeros, rather, zero is most likely simply the representative of a larger group of zeros. Zero plus 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 zero does in fact equal zero. Could it be the number of things, an enemy, perhaps, or a research group? Perhaps this is all some sort of psychological experiment? If it is, then it's a pretty fucked up experiment. I agree. I mean, come on! The guy's dead! P is, in fact, dead. The word dead hung in the air, heavy and ominous. The room went quiet again. I don't know who the hell this Zero asshole is, but I know for sure he's got to be pretty fucked up in the head to do all this. If this was all one guy, then he's got some serious issues. Well, you know, it probably wasn't all one guy. Even with the specter of death hanging over them, their discussions continued for some time. In the end, however, they learned nothing. The time is now... what is that? Is that 11.30? Yeah, whatever. By the time they finished, 1.5 of their 9 hours were gone. They had... <clears throat> Wait a second. What the fuck? What time is that? Is that... That's 10.30 then? Okay, I guess that's the hour hand and not the second hand. Which one's the... Never mind, I won't question it. All they had to show for it was impatience. Man, look, we only got 7.5 hours left. Okay. Man, these guys really like using points instead of just saying seven and a half. You really sure you want to sit around? No one was willing to argue this time. Oh, very well, then. There's only one way for us to proceed. Sure not gonna be fun running around knowing we gotta jump when Zero says jump. Well, it's stupid just to sit around here doing nothing. Thanks to Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. Correct, and so long as we follow the rules, we should, uh... We will most likely be alright. But... But what? Who's going to go in which door? June looked toward the numbered doors. Uh, yeah, that's right. We can't have any more than five people in one door. All eight of us can't go in the same door. Then it would seem we will have to split up. W wait Okay, so we're gonna have to think of a proper combination of people to go in each door. I'm telling you now, there is no way in hell that I'm going into door 5. Okay, you could go through door 4 then. Come on, don't be selfish. Call me whatever the hell you want, I'm not going in there. If I'm going to have to walk through all that blood, then I'd rather stay here. Baby. <sighs> and we were doing so well. A shook his head sadly. Sorry, but I ain't going in there either. Someone else can go into door 5. Wasn't expecting you to be such a pussy, Santa. Oh well. It's fine. It's fine. <coughs> Choking on my own spit. Oh, Santa, not you too. Hey, man, I just bought these shoes. If you think I'm gonna get some creepy dude's blood all over him, you got another thing coming. Another think coming. As opposed to another thing coming. Maybe I've just been saying the phrase wrong this entire time. Yeah, weird. That was the last straw. What the hell, man? Weren't you the one who kept saying we should get going? Yeah, so? Doesn't mean I want to go into door five. Oh, God. There was an awkward silence. Finally, Seven spoke. Fine, I'll go into door five. I can't go in there alone, though. Anyone else willing to come with me? There goes my phone again. Professionalism. There was another long silence. This time, Snake was the one to break it. I'll go. L what? Don't worry, you'll be fine. 
We may part now, but I'm certain we'll meet again later. How do you know that? Because I do. Animation. That's not an answer. If you're going, I'm going too. I'm going into that door five. What am I going to do with you? There's nothing you have to do. Ace stepped forward. If I join you, the problem is solved, correct? Seven is seven, and Snake is two. And if you add Clover's four and my one, that digital root will be five. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Seven plus two plus four plus one into fourteen into one plus four equals five! Oh, it works perfectly! The four of us can go into door five. Wait. What about the other four? What's their digital root gonna be? Shinpei did a quick mental calculation. Lotus, Santa, June, and Junpei remained. Their bracelet numbers were 8, 3, 6, and 5. What would their digital root be? Oh my fucking god, do I seriously need to... Ah, <sighs> okay, math is hard. 11, 17, 5... Wait, yes, 11. 17, plus 5. It's 5, isn't it 5? Oh god, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Oh god, I need a calculator. <laughs> it's fine. Everything is fine. Yes, yes, eight plus three plus six plus five. Five. Yes, yes, that equals. <gasps> it's four. Oh, wait, it's four. What? See, I would have been wrong. Thank god I found a calculator. That equals 22, which equals four. Huh. Well, this worked out better than expected. Anyway, he repeated what he'd determined. It's four. Add up our four bracelet bah, bracelets and the digital root is four. Then we can go into door four. Yeah, oh, that worked out well. Junpei ran over to the team assignments. Ah, ran over the team assignments one more time. Four people would go into door five, seven, Snake, Clover, and Ace. The other four people would go into door four, Lotus, Santa, June, and Junpei. Junpei had to ask himself if the teams were really what he wanted. Beyond door five was what remained of the ninth man. He never wanted to see that thing again, but something in him said it would be unwise not to examine the corpse even a little closer. Of course, if he went through door five, he wouldn't be going with Lotus and Santa. True, it would be possible for him to just bring June with him through door 5, but that would mean she would have to see the horrific carnage that waited there. Junpei didn't want that, because he's a good guy, I guess. Junpei was torn. Should he stay silent and go through door 4? Or should he stop them all and insist on door 5? As he turned his options over and over in his mind, Ace spoke up. Alright then. It seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk through door 5. Clover and Snake followed, with Seven a short distance behind. Junpei, which door do you want to go through? Oh, Jesus. Okay, okay. So, decided that door four would be fine. Okay, let's think of all the possible opportunities here. Now, I, I want to see the dead body. Maybe he's got something cool on him. I don't know. But... Would the other four going through door five be willing to examine? Oh, this... Oh. Decisions, decisions. Okay. Alright. I'm feeling door five. If only because I might find something. And really, June can just toughen the fuck up. Uh... Uh, but then how would the other ones be able to get through door four? I don't feel like doing any more math right now. Huh. Uh. Was there any particular reason that the ninth man wanted to go through door five instead of door four? I mean, was it just impulse? Did he know something was behind door 5? That man clearly knows something. Maybe there might have been some reason he went to 5 instead of 4, and just, you know, went with different combinations of people. Yeah, let's go through door 5. Hey, wait! 
Junpei's cry echoed across the room. The four people walking toward the door stopped, and turned back toward him. I want to go through door five, too. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when Jun spoke up. What? What are you saying, Junpei? If you're going to go through that door, then I'm going with you. Oh, thank God she can toughen up. He turned around to look at her. No, you can't. I can't take it. Yes, you fucking can. W why? Well, you were... You know what's in there, don't you? Are you sure you want to see that? June opened her mouth as if to say something, but instead closed it again and looked at the floor. Junpei felt an ache in his chest at her clear distress, but the choice was not his to make. There was nothing else he could do. Junpei turned away from June and his best to silence uh, and doing his best to silence his turbulent emotions. Clearly. Please, let me go into door five. Seven scratched his head and looked at the young man. Man, now we're right back where we started, you know that? Junpei's bracelet number is five, right? If we are going to add Junpei, then we must subtract five from the rest of us. Snake turned to Ace. Ace, please take good care of Clover. Oh, alright. That's... that's fine. Ah, we have separated the two pairs that are close, it seems. One plus four plus five... Don't go away! You need to listen to me, Clover. Go to door four with the others. No! Don't be so selfish. Snake's tone was harsh. Tears welled up in Clover's eyes. She bit her lip and did her best to fight them off. <coughs> Snake's expression softened and he put his arms around Clover. He held her close and whispered into her ear. You'll be fine. Just relax. It looked as if though he whispered two or three more words, but whatever they were, Junpei didn't hear him. It was clearly a murder plot that took two or three words. Or maybe just said, you know, I love you or something. That's that's three words. Whatever. He couldn't help but wonder what the other man said. Snake pulled back from his sister, his eyes kind and inquiring. Okay, I understand. No, he, he explained a murder plot to her. Her voice was barely audible from where Junpei stood. I mean, yeah, he, he, could, he could, just could have said a murder plot to him. I mean, he could have stopped the ninth man from going to go kill himself. I mean, Snake is clearly cold and heartless. Just like any actual Snake is. Huh. Weird. So yeah, maybe Snake's just trying to kill off whoever he can. Her voice was barely audible from where Junbei stood. Before long, a new teams were assembled. Those going to door 5, Seven, Snake, and Junpei. The manliest team around. 7 plus 2 plus 5 plus 14, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Those going to door 4, Lotus, Santa, June, Ace, and Clover. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 4 equals 22, into 2 plus 2 equals 4. 7, Snake, and Junpei scan their numbers bracel uh, numbered bracelets in quick succession. The screen of the red showed three asterisks. All right then, let's go. Junpei glanced around one last time, his hand resting on the lever of the red. Okay, please be careful. Concern was written place uh, plainly across her face. Junpei looked her in the eye and gave what he hoped was a reassuring nod. He pulled the lever. The door has opened. With a sharp clack of a lock releasing, the door swung open. Ahead of them, in the small hallway, were the pitiful remains of the ninth man. For a moment, Junpei froze. Try as he might, his eyes would not leave the corpse, and his feet would not leave the floor. Seven, too, seemed paralyzed. Perhaps not as much a man as I expected him to be. Now oh, well. <coughs> Snake, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned, the true badass. He walked calmly down the bloody hallway and only stopped when he realized his companions were not following. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to see such a bloody sight without sight. You know. So that's the thing. Do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? 
He hadn't even bothered to turn around, his head was, at most, slightly cocked toward one shoulder. Junpei and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and threw themselves through the door. As they did, a cold tone sounded from the left wrist of all three men. And now there's a skull. Neat. Well, <clears throat> looks to me like things are about to go boom boom. And next episode, there might actually be a bit of thinking to do. Well, a bit more thinking than I have been doing over this narrating. So, next episode. Probably less narrating, more puzzle solving. Eh, I'm sure someone will enjoy that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll find out what happens next episode. See you guys.